I don't know if it's because I'm nervous, but I've forgotten every single question. <laughs> I don't know what I start talking, it just, just, it's gone. <laughs> I feel like I always enjoyed church. It never felt like a burden. Obviously, but obviously as you get older and then, you know, your life sort of is your own now and you sort of, I guess, get more have more of a community, then that's when community and church means something to you in your personal capacity. Um, but we were always serving in church. And so I think when you're always when you're serving and you have a servant heart, it's fulfilling. You know, you feel like you're giving something, you're not just receiving. I honestly can't say I feel like a, there was a defining point. Mm -hmm. But from young, we were running kids' church and looking after. I was looking after the the elders' kids, little kids, elders' children. So I don't know. I, I guess when you, I feel like when you have an identity, uh, like a purpose in the church, or like. You know, you're not just oddly sitting around filling a chair when you actually have a purpose, whatever that may be, you know, doing the overhead projector or in the band or running kids church. If you have a purpose that you're feeling, feeling like you're fulfilling, I don't know, I think that's a, a good thing. Mm. Also, I think we were fortunate enough to have a lot of our friends in the church. Mm. So it, it made it enjoyable to come to church to know that um, you know, you, you've got something to do yeah. and it's fun and I think um, one of the things that we experienced when we were younger was visiting other churches a lot because obviously mom, and dad, mom yeah. and dad would preach at other churches and, and, and that sense of just being uncomfortable was, wasn't great, you know, so we, we really yeah, appreciated our we really church. appreciated our church because we <laughs> we're like let's go back yeah we, we had lots of friends and, <laughs> oh my word mm. yeah no there were some rough ones where you just you're sitting there and you're bored and you're like let's go back to yeah. ours where we have friends and and yeah the kids church was 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 really fun even though it was small there wasn't a lot of people it was there was an intention behind it and it was fun and there was games to play um so from that perspective, it was it was nice. And then as we got older, um, our friends grew up with us in the church. You know? mm. So um, a lot of them ended up coming to the same school as us. And you know, True. your friends at school are the same friends True. at church. And and that was that was um, I think Very one helped. of the main reasons why it was easy to stay in in, in, the, in the community. Um, we didn't True. feel like we we're missing anything. You know, being in the church. The church is kind of a place where. There's no other place like the church to develop your skills. I don't, maybe it's being a pastor's kid, but if I wasn't in church, I wouldn't have learned how to play drums. I wouldn't have learned how to play guitar. I wouldn't have learned how to... Public speaking. I would have learned that. I wouldn't have learned all the things with my computers. I wouldn't have been around so many experienced people mm. that are willing to teach me. Like, I was like, I've been making coffee for like, I don't know, 11 years. And I'm only 20, 22. So I was 10 years old when I started making coffee. And there's like experienced baristas, like this is how you do it, you chop. So that's what I really appreciated. For a lot of pastors' kids, I think they feel responsible for their parents' reputation, for like a large majority. And I think, although that's true, if you have your own revelation as, as of God, like we do, um, we would be a testament to ourselves and a testament to our parents. And that's, I feel like that's a mistake where a lot of pastors go wrong is that, that my child, you're responsible for me. If you dare misbehave, that's a representation of me. Yeah. It's true, but that's not the heart behind it. And I felt like throughout my whole childhood growing up, it was, you need to come to church to experience God for yourself. And because our parents made it fun, we can go to church like a, like average Joe. Mm -hmm. I wasn't Daniel Sivright, Tony Sivright's son. I was Daniel Sivright that went to church. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's how I was able to keep it fun. And mm -hmm. also all my friends were. <laughs> I think I think another thing was, I think from our folk side, there was no expectation for us to be perfect mm. PKs, specific, you know, yeah. like, or there was no expectation that we had to get into the ministry or there was not no expectation, but there was an expectation for us to behave well. Um, but also being naughty wasn't like this thing that would be shunned out of the family for, you know, so it um there was a lot of grace for us to be children mm. and to be learn and grow. to be naughty and make mistakes and stuff and it wasn't this like really weighted 
thing because now we passed as children we have to be these perfect kids um so so i think that that did play a role in like the fact that we didn't have to well we didn't really feel the need to go searching for anything also i think <clears throat> i think a lot of it is to um attribute to our parents i really do because like daniel saying i think maybe a lot of parents past as kids um pastors can put the pressure on their parents um but and also oh, sorry <laughs> past pastors can put their pressure on their kids but also i don't feel like my dad was my parents were consumed by church you know i think maybe that can be the mistake i don't know where the church is your entire identity as a pastor like it's your everything and like your children are just like me you know you sort yourself out you know my my dad and my mom were very present in our lives and everything that was important to us as children, they were present in our lives. And they were, like my dad often says, they were real. They were the same at home as they were at church or at school. They were just the same, you know, which seeing consistency, I think brings about consistency, you know. There weren't, there weren't like uh, lots of um, good, bad. black bad, um, I, I think, I just hated visiting other churches. <laughs> Let's be honest. It was like, Not it was straight. horrible. It was horrible. We hardly did it though. Yeah, I know. It wasn't. Yeah, no, it was like. <laughs> I mean, haven't you heard people say when you come to FCC, it just sort of just ruins you for life? Mm. But one thing I remember, which was not fun, was when we were in the church buildings where we had to lug everything. And mm. we were the setup crew. Mm. Like, mm. you know, we were the, the vol uh, volunteers that didn't volunteer you know, lugging everything mm. in the car, like trips, you know, and yeah, setting small up. car, and, oh, drums, keyboard, amps, guitars, like, everything. bring that there, that what, but I mean, it grew us, I guess. <laughs> I mean, let's appreciate what we have now. If everything stays perfectly. What's <clears throat> nice to look back on regards the good, is like Mark was saying, so many of the people from the beginning are still here. Mm, yeah. You know, like Andre and Janine and Ronnie and Nadia and Stu and Claire Charles and, and Charles and Alan. It's like we've literally lived a whole life with these, I mean, especially Daniel, his whole life, with these people. So they, mm. you know, that's, I think that is one of the very good. You know, we have mm. years and years and years of memory with them. And mm. now Mark, Christy was in love with Mark. Mm. Her whole life. And now married with little James. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think when we first moved up, it was quite tough. Uh, you know, we went to a public school, um, yeah, Bryanston right. Primary, and just uh, tough life, public school. Right? Yeah, no, no, but <laughs> no, it was, no, it's from where we came we from. We came from a small town, tiny little uh, like home little, school, little, little Christian yeah. school, and mm -hmm. we like, now uh, thrown into this shock world. Yeah, <laughs> and it was yeah. it was really hectic. And I think like I the first the first time I went to school, I saw bullying for the first time you know um on other people and i just couldn't i hated it um, yeah i was <laughs> i was but i think that was part of that was a challenging time mm. i think for the family was like just a, adjusting to joburg life from like some small little impangeni yeah time. like homeschool vibe mm. yeah i don't know if this will be valuable but it's also like the um you know growing up we didn't have much you know uh, our parents weren't Nothing, well yeah. off no. Um, you know, and, and we managed to get into a private school, but it was a Christian school, so my folks got really great discounts. So we were probably like one of the poorest families in the entire school. <laughs> so yeah, that, that was also like the part of the sacrifice of being pastor's kids was, um, you know, mm. not necessarily having everything that you wanted. But you um, appreciate what you yeah, have. Yeah, and it was like, time. well, there's no money for that or whatever it was. You know, when you have the till mm. and you're like, please, can I have a chocolate? Never, ever, ever did my mom let us get yeah, one, ever. Yeah, never got it. But it's okay. <laughs> I, I heard this one quote a while ago. I think it was by this guy, Soren, Soren Kierkegaard. I can't remember it, remember it fully, but he said, life must be lived forward, forwards, but it can only be understood backwards. And one thing that I can say about my whole life, because I've also struggled with that whole aspect of, uh, I'm, I feel like I'm the only Christian that has no story. And there was no like, oh bang, I used to be this this dark soul and now all of a sudden, all yeah. of a sudden it was kind of like it was a, a, a transition into it, a growing into it. And yeah, I can talk about like when you're 16 or so, you really start to comprehend it for yourself. But for my life, it's just it just feels that if you live your life day by day and let tomorrow worry about tomorrow, you can't help but turn around and look back and see God's entire provision. 
I've never strived to, I want to be a pastor, I want to be this, I want to be that. I just wanted to be faithful with the few things that I enjoyed every day. And now I can turn around, I'm 22, I can look and be like, I got to go to Christian school. I got to, like I said earlier, I got to play drums in a band. Like drummers dream about things like that. I get to play so much. I get to learn guitar. I get all this technology around me, all these cool people. And I never fought for it. But it was just the fact that I was faithful, tried to be as, as faithful as I, as I could every single day. And you can't help but see God's hand throughout the, your whole journey. I think um, one of the things that probably all of us have experienced is that uh, protection against um, maybe uh, decisions that can be life altering. And I think that's part of what you're saying is the blessing um, that's being passed on from generations of, of, of people who've served Christ. Um, that I feel like God has protected us as children from making certain decisions that might be life altering, you know. And if, even if we started leaving the path, you know, there's always been um, parents who are, who are concerned and, and care for us and care for our futures to just bring us back onto the path again, you know, which I think was a, a, a blessing of um, being in this environment and growing up in, in the church, you know. So, yeah, I mean, I think I have struggled, I struggled, but, you know, I've, I've had thoughts over the years, like, I don't have this turning point, like, like Jordan's testimony, you know, it was quite a tearjerker, you know, like, all of a sudden. <clears throat> but I'm also, I think I'm also just slowly realizing that, like you say, when you look back, God really has provided, and I guess I do have a testimony in a different way, you know, a different testimony, you know. <sighs> Not that it's it just is what it is, you know, it's just what what I had, you know, married at 19, our fourth child, you know, it's God is just, I guess, like what Daniel was saying, it's just living a consistent, I guess, just steady journey. What does that say? Line and length or whatever. Mm. I guess we've all just sort of and tried to do that. What I've realized for myself also, because I, I, I was talking to my friends about this the other day and I know we like why are we having such deep conversations? <laughs> but, but we were talking about this. Then I was like, why am I so concerned about having such a special testimony? It's like, it's like selfish. Mm. Why do I think I'm so special? Like, oh, I wish I was so cool that I had this great testimony. It's, how am I supposed to honor what God? You have to is what you have. This is what I got. What must I do? <laughs> and, and think of it from like my parents' perspective. Why would they, they fought this hard to have a, an environment that we could grow up in? Why would they want us to have to go on a bender and then come back again? True. It's like, true, true. What was the point of all of true. that? True, yeah. true.